All right. Hello, everybody. Hello, Time Stoners. Thanks for, for joining us for this uh, fourth webinar on package categories. Let's jump straight into it today. Firstly, what I'm going to show you today does require uh, an update. So if you've already updated to 4.10, and quite a few of you have, you will need to update now to this version, 4.10.2307.20 which has what I'm showing today. So if you've already updated 4.10, you will need to update again your, your apps. Your sites will get updated automatically if we've already updated your site. And there's a handful of you who have let us know to update your site. So just stressing that, if you are on 4.10, what I'm showing you today, you won't have. Uh, you'll need to download these apps, which are on the website and use those to get what I'm showing you today. If you haven't yet updated 4.10 and you, you want to do that today, just a reminder that before you update, always make sure you've got a backup. That just goes without saying. And if you are on 4.8, go to 4.9 first by downloading Neopack of 4.9 and run TS Admin, and that'll update you to 4.9. Then download 4.10s, run that TS Admin, that'll update to 4.10. That's not going to update your website. Then you need to let us know to update your website shoot me an email, shoot Mark an email, so that we update your site. We won't know if you update to 4.10. The only way we know, and we know that you're ready to have your site updated, is if you tell us. Okay, let's get on to today's topic, which is package categories. Well, what are package categories? Hard one to sort of define. I think you all know what I'm talking about, and you've got the email that had some teasers in there. Essentially, in package categories, we're grouping like packages. We're putting a category against packages. So that gives a better experience for your customers online to see like packages and hopefully uh, be able to see all the things that you're offering uh, more easily and hopefully even order more because of it. Let's start by the way of examples. This is a job that I've uploaded to my other website, webinar, where I'm not using package categories yet. It's still on the old version. And it's a fairly typical offer. You can see there's 24 packages, which is not extreme. It's quite common for people to have more than that. They may have 50, they may have 75. There are some offers, of course, which have less. Nothing wrong with it. The customer scrolls to see uh, their packages. Okay, now one thing I'll point out, which you do have even in the older version, you notice as I scroll down, the packages draw as they come up. Yeah, but I've already done it for these. Or that You see that one just drew right at the bottom as I pulled it up, the ones that haven't already drawn. That's already a point of difference. What we do now is we don't render the package until it comes into view, whereas in older versions, it was rendering packages, all of them straight away as soon as you hit the site. And if you can imagine, if you do have let's say 50 packages and on average, I mean, let's say six image holes on each on average, that's 300 image holes to render. Perhaps you had background as well. That was a lot of grunt needed straight away as soon as you landed on the site to render all that. And at busy times, you had a lot of people hitting your site all at once. You can imagine smoke coming out of the service to, to provide that picture. With these later versions, it renders the packages as you need them, as, you, as they come into view. And then they're cached after that, so that's okay. So that's a, a much better experience straight away for your customers because things appear straight away. You may or may not have noticed if you put in a key now, you should see, you will see your packages far quicker than you did in the past. That's because it's got less to do because it's only rendering what you see on screen at that particular time. But for today's purpose, Keep, keep your eye on, on this. We've got 24 packages and you scroll to see them all. I'm told and I understandably that people often don't scroll all the way to the bottom. They you know, don't know everything you're offering because they don't see them too easily because of that scrolling situation. So with package categories, what I'm going to do is show you some examples I've set up, then we'll set up our own and then investigate and explore the, the nuances of, of package categories. I've got exactly the same job. I can get rid of this one now from webinar. 
Let's close that tab. We've got exactly the same job here. Daisy Dance, it's the same job, same subject. Okay. So you can see there's a package categories menu toolbar. I'm not sure what we'll call it. It's not really a toolbar because they're not tools, but a menu bar. And we've divided our packages into like groups. So we've got one called collections, which is where we're showing our packages, so to speak, our package, our packs. Then we've got create your own, all grouped together, digital downloads, statuettes, groups and memory mates, and then we put in our specialty items. So overall, exactly the same number of packages, exactly the same number of package templates are being displayed, but they've been grouped together in a, in a logical grouping. It's easier for your customer to zoom in on the sort of products they want. It's easier for them to see exactly what you're offering. Probably they'll still just buy the one thing, but you never know if they see something else that they like, uh, they may buy that as well. Whereas the other way, they may have had to scroll right down to the bottom to see something else they may have liked and they wouldn't do that. So that's that same job before and after with package categories and not. Keep your eye focused on sort of that toolbar because we have got variations we can do with that, more things we can do with that. Let's uh, go to a different job, uh, school. Now, I'll just come back to her for the moment. Initially, I thought this would only be used when you do have a lot of packages in your offer, when you do have 25 minimum, 50, 75, then package categories make a lot of sense. And I'm thinking people who don't have a lot of packages in their offer, thinking, for example, the Australian school market where the offers are far simpler, wouldn't, wouldn't bother with package categories. But actually, I might be wrong because in my opinion, even, even schools with less packages still can benefit from this. Far smaller offer, there's only, I think, 12 or 13 packages in total in this offer. And yet I still think this is a better user experience by grouping them into package categories. So again, our packages, our straight packages, far easier to see what we're offering. And you notice the one at the bottom drew as I brought it into view. Then their groups, Digital download, there's only one, but again, it's categorized, far easier to, to see that, zoom in on it. And we've got some add-ons as well. So I think it works even with smaller offers, not just bigger offers, the concept of package categories. You'll see also there, we've begun stylizing those buttons a little bit. Very simply, they are now italicized, whereas in the previous example, they were just straight up and down text. Let's jump further with that idea and go to an example that I'm particularly proud of. I like this one. Okay, so here we've now got colored buttons. Colored buttons and that to me looks really nice. It's immediately brightened up the site from all the, the grays that are there. So it's made the whole site more colorful, far more categories here. So there is a scroll when they, when you have lots of categories and they don't all fit in that area, you have scroll bars. And again, the packages are categorized into logical groupings. And what's really nice is the packages themselves, the package templates are color coded to the buttons. I reckon that looks really hooky. Downloads, single sheets, memory mates, trader cards, and swappers so all i like the fact that the packages are color coded to the buttons that's uh, my little idiosyncrasy there of course i'm going to show you how we get to this but for now i'm just wetting your appetite i might just add something to the cart while i'm here go to the cart categories are also available in the cart so as your your bonus your extras your cart extras uh, here are the statuettes this time is Cart extras, color coded, and specialty items. Categories are available for the cart as well as the shop. I will empty the cart so I don't forget. 
and go back. Then I also unleashed Mark to make some buttons and he took it a bit further and used more HTML and CSS and came up with this lot, which are also pretty cool. Just to show you different things, they're not necessarily a set that, well, they may be, but they're not necessarily a set that you'd use, but just to show you, we've got text and graphic there, we've got stylized text there, we've got a, a GIF, an animated GIF for the downloads, which is, which is really cool for the digital package. You can even get emojis <laughs> in there if you, if you feel like it greeting cards. So that's taking the buttons themselves a little bit further. And I think again, making your site look nicer because you could theme those buttons to your company color scheme, for example, and make the whole site look nicer as well as the user experience looking at the packages are far easier for your customers. I will go back, I think, to the original one, Daisy. And I'm going to add stuff to the cart to the value of $100 or over. I'll just let you read that pop-up. And then underneath there, that button now appears. The hot deals category has now appeared because we have put $100 of product into the cart. And when we go in there, there's our hot deals your hot deals will be a lot nicer than mine, I'm sure. What I'm showing you here is that categories can even be conditional. The appearance of this hot deals category was conditional on someone putting $100 worth of product in the cart. It wasn't there otherwise. And yes, we have thought about it. If you reduce the cart to under $100, the button goes away. So you saw there that not only did we make the button look nice, the hot deals button was a, yeah, the hot deals button is an animated GIF also. It's a flaming logo, a flaming button. So I'm showing you two things there, the fact that it can be conditional as well as, as animated. Okie dokes, I'm going to the cart to remove that. We will work now on a senior's job. Sally Senior, I haven't done anything with categorizing yet. We will now show you how to make a simple set of categories, apply it, and then one by one, we'll look through the examples that I've already made, how we got to that point. It's all easy, nothing to, nothing to be afraid of here. All right, I'll leave that up and we will go to TS Admin. There's my seniors offer that we just saw, there aren't that many packages. That's the offer. You'll notice on the left, there is a new object in TS Admin called package categories. It is in here that you define your package category sets and then the categories themselves. It can be relative to season workspace and account if you want. I've done mine in star, 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 so it's available for all jobs. You're probably going to do the same. And you can see I've already made some category sets. For example, that's the, that's the school one and categories are on the right. So that my category set is called schools. My categories are on the right. If you'd like to think of it akin as delivery options where we can have, we have a delivery option set and then the options. Here we have a category set and then the actual categories let's make one for our senior portraits we just make a set whatever you want to call it call it anything you like your customer is never going to see the set name that's irrelevant so we make the set and then we come over and add the categories give it a code to begin with keep the code short the code is just for you again the code means nothing to your customers, they don't see it at any point. I'm going to just make some, you would probably have different categories for your senior portraits. That's for wallets. So these are wallet. That description, again, the description is just for you. The description is not what they see online. The description is for your benefit to explain what the code while we is. The heading, 
is what they see online. So I will put in there wallet, I'll call them wallet packs. This is just simple text, wallet packs. That's my first category. I'll go through and make a few more. I'm doing a CVS for canvas prints. I'm going to offer some canvas prints. Well, for my description, I don't need to put prints. I know they'll be canvas, but online, I may want that to say canvas prints instead of just canvas. I don't know, that's going to be up to you, but let's say we'll put canvas prints. Probably everybody's going to use this one nowadays. The heading is what they see online, not the description. So I'll drum that into you. And we'll do a couple more just so we've got more to play with. Uh, what else am I offering for seniors? Some collages. And collages. And finally, what else are we going to offer? What about these? Just some single prints. All right, so I've made a category set called Senior. I haven't hit submit yet, but I'm making a category set Senior Portraits, and I've just made five categories for that set. There's up and down arrows. That's important because the order that you see them here is the order that they will appear online, assuming you're going to use all five. So the wallets will be the first one, first left, then their canvas, then downloads and collages, that sing then singles. If you want to change that order, you use the arrows, okay? And so the, the order is how they appear from left to right. Number one is on the left, the last one will be the last one on the right. So now I've made my set, it's a submit changes. Let's go to the offer and assign the actual categories to the packages. My seniors offer and my 13 or so packages. Something new across the top, category set. You can choose any of your sets that you've defined. We just made the senior one, so I'm gonna choose that. Again, this means nothing to your customer. It doesn't get uploaded. They will never see the set name. This is for your benefit. What that does is when you come in here to select the category, you see them as a drop down. See, so they're the options. They're the categories that are in my senior category set. Had I selected sports, for example, they're the categories that are in my sports set. So putting the setup there is not for the customers. It doesn't auto assign them to your packages. It just gives you the appropriate drop down menu so you know what you're doing. So I'll go through and put these in. Uh, let's see, that's a digital. Dig, dig, what have we got next? These look like single prints. Singles, eight by 10 single. Single and collage, yep. Collage, then canvas, some canvas prints. I don't know how popular they are in other countries, but a lot of people are doing canvas prints here. Now, here's something interesting. At the time we're doing this job, it's close to Mother's Day. And we've got, we want to offer some Mother's Day specials. I didn't have a Mother's Day category. I didn't have a Mother's Day category in that set that I made. However, we'll just submit those changes. We'll come back to it. Let's go back to package categories. I have already made a set called miscellaneous. And in there, I've, start, I've just put in some categories that are miscellaneous. I may need them for some offers and not others. They don't really belong to any 
category set on their own. So I've just lumped them in the odds and sods miscellaneous category set. And that demonstrates an important point. When you come in here, you aren't limited to one set. I can now, for this one, for my Mother's Day packages, just change to miscellaneous and choose one of the categories over there. I'll do the, that one first. So you can flip, you can mix and match. The categories you choose don't all have to belong to the one set. So I'll emphasize that. These three categories, Mother's Day, belong to a particular set. The others belonged to a different set. Now, while we're here, let's expand on this a little bit. I could, for example, downloads, put them somewhere. Um, let me go back to my seniors. You can have a package in multiple categories. If I did that, this package, Dig7, would appear in all three of those categories. So you can have a package in multiple categories. You may have a feature package that you want front and centre all the time as package number one in every category. So you'll just check all the different categories that you're presenting. I'll go back to that. So hold on to that thought. Remember that you can have a package in multiple categories. What about this? What about if I do that? What do you think would happen if I don't choose any category? Correct. For those of you who said it will appear in all categories, that's the correct answer, not it will appear in no categories. If you don't put any categories in there and you are using categories for your other packages, this package would just appear in all of them. So leave it blank, it will appear in all categories. Put multiple categories in there if you like, but leave it blank for all categories. Let's go back and put that one back in downloads. All right, and I'm going to hit submit. Now I go to back to that job, but first I will need to refresh it, refresh the offer. We've not changed anything about the job, so we just needed to refresh the offer. And we'll go back to here. So you can see, with that same job, that senior's job now has categories. Our Mother's Day specials are in their own category. Canvas prints, the digital downloads, the collages, and the singles. I just want to work on this one one more time to show you a variation, which will lead us into uh, the next step. I'm going back to TS Admin. Going back to this offer, and I'm going back to the Mother's Day because I had, you may have noticed, two different Mother's Day categories. One was what we just saw, and the other one is going to be different. So we need to refresh. Go back to here, continue shopping, go back into her. So we, we replaced the Mother's Day text button with a graphic uh, visual button. And you notice, because that one is higher, that's, I can't remember, 55 pixels or maybe even more. They do scale. The buttons do scale left and right, up and down. So on the question of scaling, uh, you're asking about how it looks on a mobile device. By all means, if you've got your phone out now, you can put in these keys. Go to our site and put in the keys that I'm working on and have a look. But if I go to Samantha Sport, on the phone, it, the phone is a question of, of size, yeah? You're not going to fit them across on a phone. You have these scroll buttons to scroll left and right on the phone. 
I can emulate the phone on my browser if you really want to. If I do this and emulate an iPhone 12, that's what you, you have on the phone. You have scroll bars. And speaking of scrolling, if you scroll, let's say I scroll to there in this category. I was in the packages category because they're color coded. And then I go to my singles. When I go to my singles, it goes back up to package one. It's scrolled back up to the top. So you're seeing package one when I went to the singles. If I go back to the packages, it remembers where you had scrolled to. That's a very useful thing because I may be working on the bronze package, for example, and customizing it. And while I'm doing that, I want to have a quick look at the memory mates. When I come back and click on the packages button, I don't want to have to go and find my package again. It remembers where you were, so you can continue with your customization. That's quite useful. I'm, I'm being deliberately a little bit hesitant because there are some circumstances where it won't work. When I say it won't work, we don't have control if the customer pulls down the menu, the images and the backgrounds, for example, if there were. If they pull that up, you know, you can hide them and reveal them. I don't with this job, but I do with this one. See, if they do that, you sort of lost the scroll position. But the packages toolbar is always at the top of the package, so it will follow, you see? And then the packages scroll behind it. But if they, if they are at this scroll position now and then go to groups and memory mates, and while they're in groups and memory mates, pull down the images again, leave them down, and then come back to collections, it can't know where to scroll in that circumstance. That's far more difficult. So where it can, it will remember the scrolling position as you switch from category to category. If you haven't been to that category before, it will always it will go to the, the top. It will go to um, package number one. Okay, so we're now going to, we've now got categories for all these five different jobs. We're going to have a look at some of the nuances about how to make the buttons change their appearance. Let's go back to TS Admin and have a look. Well, we've seen Daisy Dance, and that was the one where we had the conditional button. So let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at this category. It was the dancers category, and nothing special about the buttons themselves. It's just plain text. Yep. When we came to the hot button, the hot deals, notice I'd placed it in the middle because when it does pop up, I wanted it in the middle. I could have made it the first button on the left so that when it popped up, it would, um, when it appeared, it would be the first button on the left, but I decided to have it centered. So there's three packages either side, three categories either side of it. The condition, there is the column called condition and all these packages can be conditional. I made a condition called hot. We won't go into the details of that, but I made a condition called hot and it simply looks at the cart value and the condition becomes true. The condition is activated if the cart has $100 or more of product in there. That's what that hot condition does. And I placed it against the button. That's simple as that. Make a condition, put it against the button. The button will only appear when that condition is true. Now, keep in mind, this is important, keep in mind, if you're doing what I do, we, we don't want to add this package, come into the cart, and then they reduce their spend, their spend, the package that was in the hot category needs to disappear as well. Yes, the button's gone, but we wanted to make sure the package disappeared as well. So you still need to, in the offer, go to the offer and let me find, here it is down there. This package, my gift package, has the condition hot as well. So it responds at the same time and in the same way. 
if I had not put the condition against the package and then I reduced my cart to under $100, the button would have disappeared. But had she ordered that free package and put it in the cart, it still would have been there. So you do need to, if you're doing what I'm doing, if you're using conditions in this example, you need to put it against the package as well. Now you're entitled to ask, you're entitled to ask, would it not be possible that every package that is in the hot deals category disappears automatically if I've put a condition against the category itself? Could, could it not just automatically pass that condition onto the packages? That's very, very dangerous. And in fact, not possible, but it, I don't like, we don't like the fact that that would do that automatically. There, are, there is also the complication, as we saw er, earlier, that categories, a package can have multiple categories. And then the condition may be true in, in one circumstance, but not the other, and things would get all tangled up. So far simpler for you to take complete control of it if you're putting a condition against the package category put it against the package as well, if you want it to disappear at the same time. I hope, I hope you got that and accept that. So that's how we got the package to be conditional. We'll come back to the button itself. Let's have a look at the schools. This window, like the package description blurb, does take basic HTML. And this is how we got the schools category buttons to be italicized. So we go back to, to these buttons in the school. Oh, I don't need to empty the cart. These are all different jobs. Okay, so these buttons were italicized because I have used the HTML tag EM emphasis. So people who know HTML, go for your life. You can stylize your buttons using HTML and you can change the color, make it bold. Now, don't be scared. For the people who don't know HTML, don't panic. We will give you some, some templates, some examples, and you can use them, modify them, change them. For the people who do know HTML or have got someone in their organization who does, you're probably rubbing your hands with glee because you can stylize the text in here with HTML. When we go back to the dancers one, the hot deals GIF that we saw, move it into the center and I'll enlarge that. If I can grab it, there we go. Again, we've used HTML. We've used the image source HTML tag to call in the GIF. The GIF is called Hot Deals 3. I've uploaded it somewhere and I'm calling that in with an alternative and set the height there. That's how we got the sports buttons to be all nice. They were actually graphics. Same deal here. We go to sports. All these buttons that we saw in the sports were just different different JPEGs or different pings that I actually used an online service to make. And I've uploaded them somewhere and we're calling them in with the image source. Again, don't panic if you don't know HTML because we can give you the, the basic formula here and then you can modify it. Now, where do you upload them? You can give them to us and we store them on your server with your site. And that's what we do, for example, with your logo on your site. That's what we do if you give us graphics that you want in snippets, for example, we can store them on the site, on the server with your other graphics. We can do the same with here and then you call them, call them up. So, you know, we would replace that with acmephotography.com, for example, if that's your site. If you already have your own location that you can upload to, a lot of you do, some of you have got your own websites that you control, you, you're uploading them to your company site, for example, rather than have to wait for us to upload them for you, rather than send them to us, wherever, wherever you're going to store these online, you can call them in. So the point I'm making here is that these buttons, this, this window can take in HTML and that's how we ended up getting all these. They are just different PNGs that I've uploaded and I'm calling them in 
with that little bit of HTML. They're not text. The word singles there is not a text. The whole thing is a graphic. Back to TS Admin. Then Mark took it a bit further. Let's have a look at Mark's examples. And if you look at, well, any, any of them really, he is using some CSS. Again, this is going to panic some people. Other people are going to be jumping for joy. He's made a, a CSS class called Mark H5, and the rest of it is, is HTML. Look, he's put in a uh, color code there, put in strong to make things bold, to make the word prints bold. But the, the CSS, what do you do? This window itself does not accept what I'm going to, I'm getting all nerdy and technical here, does not accept inline CSS. If you come up with your own CSS style sheet, give it to us, we will upload it to your site and put it in the, the appropriate spot where your site will read it, we'll, we'll store it, and then you call it in here. So Mark has made some CSS called Mark H5, my class, and he's calling it, and that's how he got these different things. Uh, there's another one here. The packages. Again, he's got a class. He made some CSS with a class of packages, and then he he's calling it to stylize his packages button. So we can do CSS. Now, what we have planned, but we may put on the back burner, is adding another column here. Rather than putting CSS all in here, would be having another column between heading and conditions called CSS. And in there, you would paste your style sheet. You would paste your customized CSS in there rather than have to give it to us to upload. And then you would you would still call it like this, but you wouldn't have to send, give it to us. We'll see if there's a need for that. We'll see if there's really a need to, as, as nice as Mark's examples are, we'll see if there's really a need to take the buttons to that nth degree where you need CSS to get a certain look. My feeling, when I go back to here, is that most people are going to be happy with this, just to make the buttons as graphics any way they like, rather than using CSS to style them, just make, make it visually exactly as you want it, and then give it to us to upload or upload it to your own place, and then call them in, rather than go to the trouble to see of CSS to get this. So these are done with CSS. That package, that word package is there is text, not a graphic. That's not one whole big graphic, but you could have made one whole big graphic that was the word packages with the packages icon. You could have made one big graphic, which was this GIF and the word downloads, and then it was a single file and you just call it in as a PNG. So I apologize to some people that I lost there, I'm sure, but I said I had to get nerdy for the people who know what I'm talking about as well. So no one gets left behind, remember? I will thank you for your attendance and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.